Coming up on FRC Recap, Annie Baker from Animark joins us to talk about what's going on with Animark and, of course, his thoughts in regards to the Infinite Recharge season being extended. Uh, of course, we'll be talking about uh, first announcing that their fields uh, will not be at some of the off-season or any off-season events and how that might impact things, including a recent announcement to IRI. Uh, Pull on Cheat Delphi shows a near split in regards to asks if teams would prefer to win chairmans or EI. Uh, Paul Cobioli assumes a new position after Little Bits is acquired. The uh, We'll go through some FRC community spots. Spotlights, take uh, from fun trivia, and of course, much more coming on here in FRC Recap. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with PTC. On Friday, May 29th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, come check out the incredible submissions for the Robots for the Rescue Challenge at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. PTC will be providing giveaways for both submitted robots and for those who watch live. Don't forget that you can register for Onshape for free and start designing right in your browser at onshape.com forward slash education dash plan. And also, viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. This is FRC Recap airing live on Tuesday, May 26. For first updates now, I'm Tyler Olds. I'm Christina Tia. Um, I'm just going to introduce Andy. Not that any anybody really needs the introduction of him, but he's the owner and president of Andy Mark, the recipient of the 2003 Woody Flowers Award, and longtime mentor, and most recently mentoring on FRC Team 3940 Cybertooth. We're really glad to have you on, um, and thanks for hopping inside. For those of you who were on for the mini pre-show, sounded like we were getting, like, a flyover because um, Andy's daughter was mowing the lawn for him, which is pretty awesome. Yep. So welcome, Andy. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on the show tonight. It's a, uh, it's I, I'm looking forward to our discussion. Yeah, it's nice to see a familiar face from like the FRC yeah. community. <laughs> so true, man. So, all right, lots to cover in this show. Uh, we're going to jump into our headlines. And uh, Andy, you don't mind reading a couple as well, do you? That's great. Thanks. I'll do that. <laughs> awesome. So uh, we're going to start with uh, one of our main stories uh, as we come in here. Uh, and many off-season events uh, have been coming up. You may be hearing that, uh, of course, from first saying that the uh, cancellation and postponement due to COVID-19 and first announcement that they can't support uh, off-season first rise events. And one of the latest announcer cancellation was one of my favorites. And that's the biannual WVROX 26-hour, 14-minute continuous event. Yeah, if sincerely, I'll put it up here, but if you haven't seen this event uh it is absolutely incredible and i was really disappointed to hear that this was going to be canceled this was scheduled in august it's only played every two years teams provide multiple drive teams and attract a pretty uh competitive crowd uh so according to uh alex stout uh from 2614 they hope to bring the event back next year so infinite recharge can be played in its uh 26 hour uh 14 minute fashion uh but iri just announced as well too uh right before the show started its cancellation uh, for 2020 as well. So more to come about this uh, later during in the show. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure Andy will probably talk about I Ryan a little bit later, but just crazy to hear uh, about that as well. All right. Yeah, seriously. Um, I, I don't know. That's just like another crappy piece of news to come out this week, but totally understandable. Um, a topic that I feel like has been surprisingly a hot topic in the off season it's barely a hot topic during the regular season but um is the chairman's versus engineering inspiration debate on cheap delphi and probably going on on every um platform outside of cheap delphi uh Carthen came in and dropped quite the bomb recently asking people to fill out a poll on cheap delphi um which i'm going to read verbatim because i was just catching up on this as i tell tyler every time we have these shows Chief Delphi is born land to me at this point. So it's always an exciting surprise to catch back up. So Karthik <laughs> put down five days ago, which award would you rather win? The Chairman's Award or the Engineering Inspiration Award? Zero context, uh, just vote and discuss or ignore that. That's cool too. And I'll we'll be digging into that a little later tonight. It was definitely interesting to see so many very strong fact-based and emotion, emotionally charged opinions that were you know, being thrown around, a lot of them coming from really 
um, like longstanding people in the community. So it was really interesting to see their take on both sides of that. And it'll be interesting to hear takes from the community as we go into this later on, and especially from Andy, who is a, you know, a mentor on a team that really works their butt off on and off the field. And especially in Indiana, where you guys have such a strong, you know, community where there, it seems like a pretty competitive region for, for both of those awards. So we'll be diving into that in just a little bit. Um, Andy, do you want to talk to us about the FTC game teaser that's coming up in literally a week? Cause June is next week. <laughs> yes, definitely. First tech challenge just recently announced the, the, the release of their game teaser, which is going to be released Thursday, June 4th. That's next week. Um, Team leads can register at myfirstinspires.org starting May 28th. That's like in a couple days. And I know that I'm excited to see what's going to happen with the FTC community and the new game and the, and the game teaser. And I think I think this would be a great chance for many people to, to invent and create and be a part of FTC, especially that we're going to keep our robots and play with FRC robots this next year. There might be a lot more interest in FTC. Yeah, totally agree with that. So speaking about uh, branching out to a new program, especially if you're in FRC, uh, don't forget to check out the XRC simulator, uh, which we're going to show up on screen. If you haven't seen this, by the way, really cool stuff. I've been doing a lot of it on fun too, but you can play some awesome multiplayer network simulations of FRC, FTC, so get in on that. And now also Vex Robotics just released this as well. Uh, so if you're an FRC competitor, the developers just announced the addition of two new FRC robots, including a tall turret shooter and a tall long distance shooter that should be able to shoot in the trench run so it'd be cool to see right now they only have one you see on screen uh, only one of these uh, robots are available now they're going to be branching out to a bit more so really cool with that uh, so you can also tune in to the second robot uh, competition champions tournament the all-star tournament uh, will be on saturday 3 p.m eastern live here at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now and for those of you who have been watching our shows for a long time um recently or actually not super recently, but we have had Team Appreciate on many, many times. So Team uh, 2468 or 2468 out of Texas. Um, one of their huge things that they are known for is first signing day, which is one of my favorite unique things that's not robot-based about this program. Um, so if you guys didn't see all the buzz about it on the first robotics competition page or on Appreciate's social media, um, it took place on May 20th. And participants from all around the world um, kind of tuned in and watched on the first Twitch TV page. Students were um, physically signing their documents to confirm that they are indeed going to a, a specific college of their choice. Um, I know my team participated this year and it was a really cool way to kind of engage our seniors, especially right now with things being so weird. It was a great way for our team to kind of come together um, and celebrate our seniors. The um, if you take a look at Team Appreciate's Facebook page and their website, they um, did a ton of social media coverage and were able to share a lot of the content that maybe even your team or other teams around the world submitted for first signing day. So it was really cool to see that first partnered with them. I'm excited to talk a little bit more about it in a little bit. Um, let's see. Oh, next on the list, we have what CAD programs will your team use in 2021? And Andy, you seem like just the person to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I love CAD. I, I've used CAD since 1991, I think. So I've been doing CAD for a long time. But I was kind of surprised. Uh, a recent poll on Chief Delphi asked teams which CAD programs they will use for 2021. And there's a, a couple hundred votes um, in, and Onshape so far took the highest response rate of 36% with SolidWorks close behind at 33%. Inventor was 17. So also were Fusion, Fusion 360, which is also like Inventor, an AutoCAD product. And then um, AutoCAD and six other responses. One of the selection options, SketchUp, I think that's from Google, right? That, that received zero votes. I've never heard of that. And <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's Google, right? Is that right? It's based through Google now. I don't know if it was originated through Google, I think they just kind of absorbed it um, through a third party developer, but it is okay. it is nice because now that I'm learning Google, it's integrated into the Google Classroom suite. So teachers can oh. use it in their um, like Google Classroom and stuff. Cool. Yeah, definitely not good for designing FRC robots, but from what I've heard, it's, it's good for FTC and smaller like that okay. stuff. 
Very interesting. Well, speaking about CAD things, by the way, this Friday, don't forget to tune in to the uh, Robots to the Rescue Showcase. Over 150 robots were submitted that tackled the real-world challenge using Onshape for a chance uh, of a share of $7,000, things that go towards like your team registration. Uh, you can check out uh, a sneak peek that we were sent, actually, uh, from Paradigm Shift 1259. This is uh, their robot that they created, uh, which is a Meals on Robotic Wheels robot to help solve a real-world challenge. I think this is pretty awesome. Uh, so really cool stuff. Uh, and, and by the way, if you didn't submit, uh, you can come check it out still. PTC is uh, throwing in some Amazon gift cards to give away to live viewers, so you can see some really cool designs and potentially win some gift cards. Why not? Uh, so check it out, twitch.tv forward slash first updates now on Friday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and all teams can register for Onshape for free if you go to onshape.com forward slash education dash plan. Yeah. And speaking of companies that, you know, support robotics, uh, our longtime friend, Paul Copioli, um, just became the CEO of a really cool educational robotics company that I really, really love as a teacher. So, um, Paul Gobioli is a familiar face on fun and in the FRC community is a current mentor on team 3310 out of Texas and is probably best known to the people that are on the show right now for being a Thunder Chicken uh, previous mentor. So he, I feel like he's had a really cool career and just, you know, path to where he is now. And I'm excited to see what Sphero does as a company and with his leadership. Um, I've always been impressed with that company to begin with and... I think Paul's kind of got a really great eye for competitive robotics and obviously has really well-rounded background. Um, and I'm sure having kids himself that are super into robotics is really going to like allow that company to do great things with his leadership. So congratulations to Paul. I'm super excited. It's really cool to be able to tell like the fellow science teacher at, uh, at my school that, you know, Oh, by the way, that Sphero kit that you're using, like a, I'm friends with the guy that's CEO. No big deal. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's really cool to like just to see like how much some of the people in our community have accomplished, like both like really young people and you know people that have been around for a while. And I think he's a really good example, and Andy, you as well, of how even like as you get older, you want to continue to like grow and push yourself and explore new avenues because you never know. You know. Yeah, this was really, really cool opportunity for Paul. Um, Oh, sorry, Christina. Um, I, I was able to visit with him back in February in Denver, visiting him at Sphero. We had a really nice conversation, really nice visit, and he, he was very excited to be there. He was also excited to talk about some of the tactical things they're doing as a company. And during the announcement, when they announced that he's the CEO, they announced the spinoff of a company called, I think, Company 6. And so um, there's, a, there's a tactical group within Sphero that, that spun off that's going to help aid people who are first responders and getting into situations that um, might be dangerous for people. So having a robot in that situation will help out. Wow. That's so cool. I had no idea. I, it's That's how it still blows me away. It's like a company that's doing something really well. You know, they, they see a need and, you know, they have people that have such great skill sets. It's like, I don't know, just makes me happy to see that there's companies that are still willing to like go out and kind of do things like that. So that's really cool. Thanks for sharing that. And kudos to Paul again and best of luck. So Tyler, um, <laughs> sad times. Will any FRC events take place in 2020 besides the weeks, what, one and two ish that we saw? Yeah, this is a, an interesting thing to go through. And the reason I bring this up on here is that really getting into specifically what first said on the thing is that the first will not support events for things, but that does not necessarily mean that there couldn't be events uh, that happen uh, moving forward. I think the other interesting thing, too, is looking at a, a bigger picture of not just Infinite Recharge, but will things like FTC and FLL happen during 2020 as well, too, where typically many events do happen for those as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, Andy, I'd love to get your input on this, as, you know, a lot of people uh, may point to things like the Andy Mark Field or something like that. Uh, would, would Annie Mark actually uh, lease her loan out of field if somebody was interested in getting one? We would love to. However, it's not our equipment. Who owns that stuff is First. So First owns the game-specific items, and they also own probably what's worth more value is the electronics of every field. So most, gosh, most off-season events all run on what, tra what traditionally has been First-specific and First-owned fields. 
we at Andy Work, we usually have three sets of those fields, and then we facilitate the use of the field. But most of the cost for the off-season events is the transportation from, like, if, if um, like Cowtown Throwdown, our, our cost is really mostly transportation of equipment from our place in Kokomo, Indiana, out to Kansas City. Mm-hmm. And, and other events is similar. Now, we do charge for use of game objects and some skilled FTA service and um, the rental of the field components themselves because we still have to ship that stuff back and forth to first headquarters. But since it's first owned field, they do not, I can't speak for them, but I've talked to them about this a few times <laughs> last month. And they said they, they just can't feel comfortable um, p- permitting the use of their equipment, not only for events that are out of their control because, um, because of the health of their of the competitors, but also they felt, I, th- I think they felt very torn regarding supporting their equipment for off season events. When we all know there are so many district and regional events that really wanted to run this summer or early fall. And so since they said no to running those regionals and district events, they felt like they had to say no to running off seasons. So last time I went to an off season event that required no first equipment i was out actually in taiwan for power up they uh, in the i guess the fall of 2018 sure they were trying to get a lot more activity going on with frc teams in taiwan and those guys built their own field they ran their own um you know gosh i forget all the nomenclature all the different names of things but they had they had tables and chairs they had um their what was the what was the place where you put the power uh, the the cubes behind the alliance station i forget oh, the... what that was called Power-ups? The power-ups. So whenever anybody got a power-up, a, 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 a student would hold up a sign and hold an air horn with the sound. So it was all <laughs> manual. It was it was genius. These guys worked That's their butts off to try to run. So, awesome. so you, could, you could theoretically run an off-season event, but you just can't use first official equipment. But, but there seems like Chessy Arena, right, that you could potentially use as an FMS substitute, right? I, I've never been to Chessy Champs, but I think I think they still use the hardware. They still use the game specific hardware sure. and yeah. the electronic That's a good point. hardware. Yeah. I think what I think what they do is they they do some really nifty stuff with software. So if someone re- really wanted to go after it, and they would have to just build their own switch generator and the the um, the control panels and the, the power um, scoring device and all that stuff. It it would be. <laughs> I'm sure people have these out there. There's a lot of practice fields out there, and I'm sure there's yeah. going to be a lot, a lot of play dates happening this fall. But I don't know if there's going to be off-season events. I'd be surprised if I saw like a 20 team or 25 team or whatever event because they're not they're not sanctioned unless first changes their mind, which I don't think they will. Um, they're not going to use first equipment for those types of events. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's an interesting thing, Christine. Is uh, you know. With, with the current climate, you know, obviously right now, it's like you're saying, I don't think there's, you know, unless something drastically changes, I'd be very surprised if we see anything happen. But, you know, you never know. A vaccine could come. Yeah. Uh, you know, it could be more culturally acceptable at some point to have larger events. Uh, I've always said the barometer is the NFL. If the NFL allows people in stadiums, then we'll see what happens. Uh, what what say you? Is there any, any chance we might see something happen? I, I mean, I don't, I don't see it being a full-on, like, real event or as close to our that people may have competed in week one and two but there will be i feel like there will be something we're not going to there's no way for us to really access the field and who knows like where are we even going to hold an off-season event you know our like our high school that we typically would host it at our teacher hasn't even been able to go in besides maybe one or two times in the last two months to like go and get one or two things so I don't anticipate it happening in New England anytime soon. Um, I think for teams that are looking to do some sort of off season and engage people with something, um, really think it out before you do it. Yeah. Because I mean, it, it could be really fun. I know that I would love to give our seniors any sort of experience with the robot that they built this year and the work that they put in. However, I know that you know us putting the effort and money and time into an off season that could you know really don't think has the ability to pan out the way that we would like it to. I don't think it's worth it. Um, 
I know that there are so many teams and like, you know, groups that are coming up with alternative ideas for a different type of competitive, like, event or thing. Um, it may not be like in person, like people have talked about, like, you know, like the CAD challenges that that fun does, um, like catathons and then so the simulator games, like those are a great way to be competitive, but not necessarily be uh, like physically around each other. I am curious to see though, I know in Texas, um, their district decided that they were going to go ahead and take the like chairman's award winners from the district events that they had chosen and then um, do interviews for the winners that were technically like supposed to be interviewed at their district championship. So I'd be curious mm. to see like what non compet like robotics on the field like off-season things that teams do, that to me would be more interesting than trying to put in a ton of like resources and effort to like jank the game, I guess, <laughs> to some capacity. But I don't know. I want to see somebody make like a, a like what is it the EV3 kit like version of this year's game because somebody's done it every year. That's true. And it's so good, like so so good. Like I love when teams remake their robot using like either. Like Vex or um, like FTC or FLL parts, that's so good. Or teams that make the robots out of food for like their end of year banquet. Like more people need to get better at you know like the cake sculpting aspect of of the off season. So yeah. And with that, <laughs> let's roll into <laughs> our next topic, which is going to be <laughs> Germans versus engineering inspiration, which up until recently I didn't realize was such a hot topic on the internet. And I got a little excited because that is what I spend all of my time entering doing. Um, well, not just EI and chairmans, but anyway. So the discussion that was going on in Chief Delphi, I thought was really interesting. So in the comments that people were making, there was a lot of really good, um, I would say, like points of view, because you had a lot of people that you know are long-standing members of the community. You had some students in there, um, teams that may have won an award for the first time recently. It was really interesting to see all the different takes on it. Um, I was actually surprised too to see people that I have either mentored with or you know that I'm friends with that had really really strong opinions when they really could have cared less um, at the event themselves. So it was it was really interesting. And I know Andy, your team has. Whether or not you applied for chairmans or you've won, you know, the banner or the medals or whatever. Um, what's your take on this from the point of view as a current mentor on your team? Not necessarily somebody who has like all of that, you know, prior history of, you know, where the chairman's award was, you know, way back in the day or where EI yeah, sure. was way back in the day. I our, our team, Cybertooth, is a great team. I, I, I love the kids. I love the team. This will be our 10th year coming up this coming year. And we have not ever – we've not ever won a, a district or a regional chairman's award. We're not – we're not as – we're not right now at the level of some of the really strong RCA-level teams in Indiana. With that said, I encourage our kids to still put, put forth – a chairman's award entry every year. And I think what it does is it makes them realize all the good that they've done. And we're one of those teams where, it, you know, we just do things because we want to do them. We don't, by no means do we do them because it looks good on chairman's, which drives me crazy. So I think they have the right attitude about it. Hey, we do these things that we want to do them. We do outreach. We do a, we do a robot camp in the summer, which they're debating on how to do right now. And, they do other things like that, and oh, by the way, it goes in our chairman's award. We don't we don't do things to to get because they need to be chairman's award types of things. So for us, um, we would love to win chairman's award locally, and we we would like to eventually win chairman's award on, on a championship level. But we know that that's far far away. So for us, and in, in my opinion, I can't speak for our team, but because. Engineering inspiration has a has a prize with it of of entry fee of thousands of dollars. I think for me, I would rather us win that because on the local level, at the world championship level, I think there's a different story. I think there's a lot more prestige with um, world championship Hall of Fame and Chairman's Award. People know people remember those are legendary teams who win those. And I I don't know who won EI two or three years That's ago. That's a great point. On yeah. the on the championship level. Mm -hmm. So the championship level, yes, Chairman's Award is where it's at. 
that gives you prestige. It's legendary. It's Hall of Fame. But on a local level where the regionals and districts happen, I think the EI is where it's at because it comes with a big old prize that helps you take care of fundraising. It helps you pay for kids' trips to um, champs. You can bring more kids to champs. You can bring more kids um, into this organization. And I think um, kudos to NASA and Dave Lavery for putting uh, – for for sponsoring the engineering inspiration award years ago and giving out this prize money. And I think, I think my guess is they were hoping somebody else would come along and sponsor chairman's award in the same manner, but no one's ever done it. And I'm, I don't have a big enough company that could do that, but that would be really cool. If someone like, you know, some big old company came along and said, Hey, we're going to give five grand to every um, RCA and district chairman's award team. That would be neat. Wasn't there a year where yeah, uh, chairman's people got like two grand or something like that? I think it was 3000 actually, wasn't it? I don't remember. I, I, don't I, think, think, so I think this was back maybe like 20, early 2010s or something like that. I don't know. Maybe chat can, can chime in on this. I thought there was one year that they did that um, for, you know, I wonder uh, the data that, that, that's being presented here between chairman's and yeah, I think two things keep in mind. One, this is cheap Delphi. So these are, Typically, people that are more attuned teams, like people who pay attention to things more, right, because they're actively surfing the Internet for things. Um, doesn't mean you agree with them or not, but, you know, versus, you know, teams that, you know, literally their season stops, they don't do anything. Second thing, with COVID-19 and everything coming around, I wonder how much of a bias uh, the – uh, $5,000 makes, especially during a time like this, right? You know, if you had done this two years ago, yeah, five grand's great, but now five grand is worth a lot more than what it was two years ago uh, on that. And then I think third is, you know, what if the five grand was gone? Uh, and also to mention, I think the five grand is, all, is only for U.S. teams, if I remember correctly. Is that correct? So I believe uh, so. That makes sense because this is a NASA sponsored yes, thing. Right? <laughs> NASA is, is yeah. our government money. They're not um, sponsoring they the Chinese the... teams or what? Correct. Oh. Yeah. So somebody in chat, N-L-S-N-G-R-N, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce those letters put together, but um, they are on team 1108, and they said our first year we won National Rookie All-Star, which is insane. That's pretty amazing. Then we basically jump-started the Kansas City region and have eight regional chairman's awards, zero EIs, but – haven't won RCA since 2014. Um, they said well, money is definitely awesome. My feeling is that it is mean it is meaning that we're doing the right things to increase engineering and our education in our community. And honestly, I feel like they hit the nail on the head. To me, in in my observation and my, I think it's close to 20 years now. 98 was my first year. Um, You're over my, 20, Christine. My observation, at least. <laughs> so, uh, no, no, uh, Christine went a little bit wrong. Twenty years. <laughs> thing that I've known. Now. Am I back? You are back. Yes. Am I a human again? Okay. So, in my observations, um, I have noticed that the teams that get EI, at least for the most part that I've seen at the like regional and district level, are so happy because they have no clue. Um, EI, when you look at it on paper in the award description on the first website, it's it has no like submission requirements whatsoever. So everybody's eligible for it walking into the venue. It's all based on the like basically the interaction that you have with the judges and then, you know, whatever else happens at the event in terms of how your team is behaving and the things that you're saying to the judges. There are people that literally have strategized as a team and coached their students or suggested to their students or whatever you want to call it to kind of like finagle every conversation back to, you know, one particular thing, whether it's the robot or, you know, outreach. So there's definitely ways to take in a word like EI where it's not necessarily presentation based or submission based. Um, it's really just conversation and interaction based how you package your team's story and get people to remember it. There's ways to, uh, to approach that may not be like, you know, the way that most teams would think to do it, but will help kind of boost your chances in the judging room. Um, like when you look at the award description and that person hit it on the head when they were talking about, it's showing you that you guys are doing the right thing as a team. Um, like the description is celebrates outstanding success and advancing respect and appreciation for engineering within a team school or organization and community. Like that should be everybody's goal. But I think that this is like the perfect example of like a team that may not have cared about non-robot things 
and you know they may get this award and it'll jumpstart them to go to chairman's um i'm interested to see i know this is not necessarily correlated with this topic but i'm curious to see if the the documentation submission side of chairman's is going to be applied to the technical awards at some point um this year to help kind of back up that you know the are you really doing what you're saying you're doing which when you think about it like ei you can definitely make things up and you know just spit it out on the spot to a judge's face during an interview and genuinely hope it's not happening but unfortunately there's the possibility for that um i i do hope that you know in the future we see some sort of technical award that may be like the crown jewel of the you know the technical side of awards um kind of like chairman's is i guess for the outreach or like non-robot side of things where you do have to submit documentation like an ftc in order to be eligible for awards and stuff you have to have your engineering notebook and all these other things and mm -hmm. i'd be curious to see if first and you know the the people that are working on the um like judging and awards description side of things start to evolve that because we have seen a lot of changes in the awards in the last few years for the better i would say um to make it maybe more accessible to teams uh like the entrepreneurship award totally revamped for all the right reasons in my opinion um andy i don't know or tyler have you have you guys seen any of the changes or like what do you think we could see happen i guess based on like where things have gone with chairmans um like where do you see things going i guess in the future andy you've seen i feel like a big evolution of awards. um well chairman's chairman's i'm torn on I, I i think there's a really good debate going on with chairman's with regard to how other how your outreach into other STEM programs is graded by certain judges within the community and certain regions judge it different ways uh, because it, it's hard. It's hard for judges to have a rubric at the same time. It's hard for judges to be consistent. So somewhere in there, there's a sweet spot of the optimal judging process. And I know there's people who are very passionate on both sides of the issue with regard to chairman's award. Um, at the same time, what you're talking about is some some technical awards. Some people I know that get some students and mentors get very passionate about winning certain technical awards, and they're very they're they're very thankful, and it's it's a it's a big deal to win certain ch ch technical awards. So I think there's going to be an evolution. I think our, our judges, um, the volunteer judge advisors uh, at the championship level, are very very good. Um, Alan and Cindy and First Corporate does a good job with this. I think they listen. I think it takes them a long time to make changes, and I think that's okay because they're they're not really they, they shouldn't make changes quickly. So they will. I'm sure they'll make tweaks and changes to this as we go along. So we're going to move on to our next part here uh, and talk to Andy uh, about, uh, of course, some of the impacts that are happening uh, at Andy Mark. Uh, Andy, you sent out a letter recently to your community uh, as well, too, expressing uh, in regards to the changes, the infinite recharge, uh, what's going on. And then there's also a survey you sent out. Uh, and then uh, not to keep piling on more, but I would also love to talk about uh, one other announcement you had, too, where uh, on your social media you mentioned that uh, you were going to be bringing on uh, Rev uh, products to your website as well. Gosh. Okay. So a couple things there. Um, first of all, we, we've been, we talked to first a lot during the off season and also during the competition season. And we're under, we're under a few NDAs with different programs, different people at first. So we're, we are, we have a good close relationship with first. And I, I appreciate their, their, um, the, the, the relationship we have with them. So it, it was to me a, a bit of a surprise when they when they announced it, but I a, a few days or earlier I kind of I got I got wind of a few things. Are like ah, oh, oh, this is coming. They're they're going to announce that we're going to replay FRC Infinite Recharge for 2021, and we actually went through a risk assessment um, study with Finn Andy Mark, and we said what what are all the things that could go wrong with with the impact of COVID 19. To the first community, then how? Which one of those things would impact Andy Mark the worst? And pretty much the one thing that we identified as probably the worst thing was replaying um, the 2020 game for 2021. Now, even though that impacts us the worst, don't get me wrong. I think and I believe truly that that is the right decision for the first community um, because it's going to save teams tons of money because they don't have to all shell out another two to 10 grand 
on robot parts, building one or two or three robots. They get to play with the robots they already built. Now, there's some there's some casualties or there's some negative aspects of that, but the fact that they don't have to build a new robot saves them money, but that costs us revenue. Mm-hmm. So we're we have to we have to react and figure out how to how to a either get other revenue, how to pivot, and how to find other revenue, and those kinds of things. Like like for instance, this week, sometime this week, we're going to come out with a with a product that actually is like a three uh, two and a half foot tall FTC corner. Um, like within an FTC game, you got four corners on the field perimeter. And if you make the plastic taller, it's a sneeze shield for a table. Oh. So <laughs> that's kind of a cool product. We have all the stuff in, in stock. We got plastic. We got the hinges. We got the extrusions. Just make it taller. And you put it on a uh, on a conference room table at a break area in a cafeteria at a big old factory. And now you have isolated people eat lunch to get together. So that's going to come out. Um, so we have to pivot. We have to react. Also, another thing we have to do is we, we're we going to have to restructure our organization. We're going to have to go through, and we're, we're doing this right now. We just had a meeting today. We're, we're going to have to restructure. Um, we already had some voluntary layoffs of a few people in operations last week. Um, we're going to have to really strongly consider what we're doing as a company really for the next 18 months. Um, if you think about it, no one's, no one's building any new FRC robots to play a new game in FRC until a year from January. Yeah. Now there's going to be some testing done. There's going to be people that are going to be improving the robots. That they someone might might look at 148 or 118 or some of these or 1690 or whoever. They're going to say, "Gosh, I want, I want my robot to be like them. I'm going to make that robot." But it's not very many teams are going to build from the ground up. They might change some things. They might add a few parts here and there. They might add a mechanism here and there. And I hope they do for our sake. But they need to do what's right for them, not not what's right for us. So we're we're trying to be really creative in some of the things we're doing. Um, one of the things that I mean, we're we're involved with FTC also for, for many years. We've been the the game field um, provider um, for the FTC competition. So um, one of the things I'd like to see FRC teams do if they're bored and if they want to create and invent a new robot. Play the FTC game that first just was now recently talking about. So we might see a lot of FRC teams. Oh yeah, also do FTC this fall and this winter because they want to create a new thing. So that might be a good thing. And obviously, I'm involved with first and FTC. I'm sure that there's going to be teams that are going to be very productive doing the same thing with VEX. So if teams want to do FTC, they want to do VEX. They want to do sea perch. They want to do underwater stuff. I, National Robotics League, this might be one of those years that a team might want to venture out and do those things. I would prefer them doing FTC because that, that, that <laughs> butters my brain. But, um, well, then, then, yeah, then VEX announced that the, you can use parts uh, now outside of the VEX ecosystem now, I believe, right? Gosh, that's news to me. I, I missed that announcement. I, I, really? I, I, that is, I, I don't have – I guess I don't exactly remember. I thought I heard that. That was a change. I have to admit, I haven't followed VEX as much in the last two years as I have recently, but I thought that was a uh, potential for that as well. Now you can use VEX parts on FTC robot. You can do that. <laughs> um, you can use, you can't, I think motors are limited. Um, control system is limited, but with the mechanics, you can use whatever you want as far as wheels and gearboxes and that kind of stuff. How, yeah, how does I, your, how does your mix change then? You know, I know you have the survey and we'll talk about it in a second, but like obviously with FRC changing your product mix uh, in regards to your sales, your sales volume mix is probably going to shift a little bit, right? Where, uh, oh, yeah. you know, FRC is going to go down a lot and hopefully FTC goes up to supplement that, but you know, there's still going to be a big gap in between, right? Sure. I mean, it's not necessarily a product mix right now. We, we have a pretty good product mix, what we have on the shelf. But what what, what we really just had to um, reshift was product development mix. So sure. all the engineers, you know how those guys are and, and women, they they all want to develop really cool things. We have this big, long list of everything, everything we want to develop this summer. And we're going to whittle it down to the most important things that we want to develop. And then most of those things just went off the list because we can't afford to develop something for FRC if we're not sure we're going to sell it or it's going to take us eight, 18 months to sell it. So, um, so yeah, I think product development for this summer has shifted dramatically. And I pretty much given the directive, I said, you are not developing anything 
that can't be sold within the next six months. So we are we are really rapidly developing some new things. That I'm excited to, to, to roll out within the next few weeks. And it's not just sneeze separators on cafeteria tables, but, but uh, we are putting more focus on things that aren't necessarily FRC. And I'm, we're not ready to release those things, but I'm really excited about a couple of them that are that people will be really happy about. That sounds really exciting. So we had a lot of discussion going on in chat about FTC, and um, we did get a, a really great comment that was something that I was thinking about, too, from Tyler Holtzman. Uh, he is questioning whether or not you... Tr- oh, can you repeat that, Christine? Can you repeat that? Um, yeah, so Tyler Holtzman had mentioned in chat that he... Uh, he kind of asked, like, are you sure about that, Andy, when you mentioned, uh, you know, teams are going to be rebuilding a brand new robot. Um, I am really curious. I I do think there is going to be a lot more redesign. It may not be start to finish, which obviously is a, a huge impact on you guys at Andy Mark. Um, like you said, I, as somebody who didn't really have any insight into the manufacturing side of engineering and what a product development is like start to finish until, you know, overhearing Sonos calls uh, for several years now, but it's it's so true. Um, I, I really would love to have you kind of explain that more at some point on another show to the first community, kind of like what it looks like, you know, for Andy Mark to start in and onto their robot development um, of products. Because I think a lot of people are like, oh, I want it now. Like Amazon Prime right. has gotten us to that point. But well, um, Ty- it's a good point Tyler's, that you brought up. So. Uh, Tyler Holtzman is absolutely right. I don't know. No one, not one person knows what all these teams are going to do. We are in new territory, folks. We are blazing a new trail here. And all my yeah. all my past models, all my past sales models, same with Rev, same with Vex, same with RC and West Coast, all these people, we all don't know what to expect because, A, right now we're in build season. We are in build season. It's May. And we're, build se- we're in build season right now until, until March and April of next year. Not only is the bag gone, but there is there will be no more a peak buying season in January, February. It's going to be a huge flat curve. It's not going to be a spike. There still will be sales, but we don't know which teams are going to be rebuilding, which teams aren't. Tyler's team is a premier team. Obviously, um, OP Robotics is a premier team. So his team is at the, is at the top end of mm-hmm. my the top 5% team, top 1% teams, whereas the average team might not have the money to do so. So that's why we're doing this mm-hmm. survey. And we've gotten, I think, almost 300, 300 teams represented so far. And I'm going to give some incentives. Like I, I have this stupid um, Cybertooth like snuggy onesie that we <laughs> bought for scouting meetings. And I'm going to have to go into town into Oscar's Pizza and order pizza in person on video if we get 750 teams to sign up for the survey, if we get a thousand teams sign up for the survey, then I've got to go out in our, in our flooded parking lot pond with the inner tube and float around for a while on video. Oh, man. Kind of silly. It's so a big, I don't it's a big parking lot. Myself. So it is, it is, but Tyler, Tyler's right. Not one person, not one person knows, no one knows what's going to happen. So the survey is going to help us create our crystal ball to figure out what's going to happen. And then mm-hmm. we can, we can plug in those percentages. Like, like if, if it, if we can somehow determine we're going to get 43% of FRC sales for this next year, I know what my FRC sales were the past two years. I can take an average of those, multiply that by 43%. And that's going to be my, my um, sales for next year. At least that's what I think it might be. But I don't know what that number is. It could be 60%. It could be 10%. Yeah. It could be, mm-hmm. I don't know. So um, I think it really depends on team sponsorship. It depends on on um, what a team makeup is going to, to want to do, how competitive they want to be, mm-hmm. uh, many, many things. So Andy, can you talk a little bit about uh, what's in the survey as well too and maybe why you're asking these specific questions or, or what you're planning on doing with the data maybe more importantly as well? Well, yeah, we're starting to talk about what, what we might. We weren't planning on releasing any, any of the data, and I don't think I don't think we're going to release all of it. We might release a little bit of it in order to get more responses. Um, like one of the things that was interesting is we we um, we asked what influences a, a team purchase. Like, is it um, the the company's reputation, speed to an order, customer service, 
um, online reviews or what people talk about on Chief Delphi or what people talk about word of mouth. So um, I think the one that was, that was surprising. It was a, a high, one of the highest ranked one was, was the online reviews. Online reviews were pretty powerful and word of mouth was also pretty powerful. We also were asking teams, we're asking teams how much they purchased on a, on a generic robot part for their, what's their budget for robot parts in the past. That well, but oh, Andy, you're cutting out a little bit there. I'm sorry. So we're, we're asking how much money they spent with us in the past for their team, and then compared with how much they spent, with them, they might spend some here. And so we'll try it that. Thing. Some, some so Andy, I do apologize. For, for I do apologize to cut in. It sounds like your your mic has gone a little bit hollow on that. But um, one of the things, so we'll let you fix that. And I guess one of the other things I um, I'd love to bring up as well too, as we wrap up and, and with the surveys, and we will be starting uh, a trivia in just a little bit. So we'll be talking about that. Mm -hmm. uh, is also uh, talking about uh, the Rev uh, uh, partnership that you have now that uh, you can purchase uh, Neos uh, brushless motors and Neo five fifties on your site as well now. Yeah, we so. We, um, we've agreed to be a, a distributor of the Neos, the Neo Minis, and the, or the, or the 550s, and also the Spark Smart Maxes and Mini, um, Spark Minis. We are no longer a distributor for Talons, Victors, and Falcon 500s. We, we mistakenly put up a graphic on the Falcon 500 page a couple days ago that said discontinued. It's only discontinued with us. Falcon 500 is a great product, and we encourage anybody who wants the Falcon 500 to go to Cross the Road Electronics to buy it or Vex Robotics to buy it. So it was only discontinued because we weren't selling it. Sure. So we we were thinking poorly, but we we just it was a it was a business strategy change to um, to carry the Spark products or the the Neo products versus the Victor's Talons and Falcon 500s. That uh, makes, makes a lot of sense uh, w with that in regards to business changes, you know, new things change. And I don't think it's, uh, you know, I, I, you know, the, I think the subreddit's easy to call out any mistake as it comes through. Right. And sometimes things, uh, how things might be viewed internally might not be viewed to the external audience. So it, it's glad to hear that, you know, you're moving forward with that, correcting that mistake. And, and that's just the way business is sometimes, you know, so, but uh, we wish you good luck in regards to that. And I uh, appreciate you taking the time uh, to talk more about, uh, you know, how, how any marks being impacted. And, uh, you know, of course we've, you know, we've been uh, friends and colleagues a long time with this goes through and I can't uh, uh, wish anything but the best as I have many friends who also work for you at your company and I'm sure that they're all in position that they want to do whatever they can to make sure that things continue moving forward in the right direction for you. Yeah, I, I do want to say we've been I've been trying to be very transparent and communicative to our staff during this time. They, they all see what's happening. Um, they've all been nothing but positive during this time. And I thank them for their patience and understanding as we're going through this this really tough challenge right now, admittedly. All right, well, let's get into our shout out oh, of the week. Um, and, the, and we do have to move on. I apologize. Our shout out of the week uh, is from uh, Scotty uh, Maker, or Scotty Makes for their new hack of the limelight. Uh, we're going to leave audio on, but I do want to show us. Let's take a look here. Andy, I'm going to guess you have not seen this, but this is a new limelight hack. Oh, very nice. I like the filming. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. It lights up. <laughs> so, so shout out to that. By the way, if you're interested in shout outs, uh, as we're going to be doing this show weekly now, uh, please take us on social media at First Updates Now or visit our Discord at discord.gg uh, forward slash First Updates Now. Let us know what's going on with your team. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I want to stay a little bit away from the PPE stuff. It's just, it's just, you know, I appreciate all of it that's going through, but there's always like, it's that vetted. Do we want to be showing that? Uh, and kind of, you know, it, it becomes the same thing over and over. So we, we've been inundated with requests for that. Uh, let us know what else is going on uh, right now in first. We'd love to hear more uh, about that and what your team is doing to, to make either your team or first a better place as well. 
Uh, so we are going to wrap up uh, here today. I know we're running a little bit late on time, but we are going to do some trivia. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, Andy has graciously uh, volunteered uh, <laughs> to, quote unquote, volunteered to uh, participate in trivia. Uh, so if you're interested, we're going to give everybody just a minute. Uh, please join the call-in uh, channel queue uh, in discord.gg forward slash first updates now, and that will be your opportunity to play. So we're going to give that just a minute. Uh, and Andy, uh, just while we're doing that, and, and we'll actually explain how this goes through, is Andy's going to be given five questions uh, as well as the other uh, person who calls in. Uh, and you're going to get a chance to win a $30 Amazon gift card uh, for doing so. And sometimes we do get people who play, sometimes we don't, so we'll see. Uh, but I think I think I already have uh, somebody in mind that has joined. The first person I saw, uh, we'll see. So you're going to get five questions. Uh, Andy's going to take off his headphones during the time or mute himself during time so he can't hear the questions. Uh, we'll ask the first person to come in, and then we'll go through from there. Now, I will preface saying that uh, I'm going to bring these people in through Discord, and I'm hoping my virtual audio kibbles are set up correctly. Uh, so we'll see if that happens or not uh, to get these people in. Worst comes to worst, I should be able to hear them, and we'll go through that way so let's try somebody uh let's see if we uh can bring somebody on here and it uh, looks like we have uh, a t holtz man t holtz man are uh, you there i, I am, am here, here yes, yes thank, thank you. you so uh, were oh, you guys my. able to hear tyler andy and christine could you hear I, tyler or no i can't okay I can't. cool Hi, tyler. i wasn't sure if i had it set up correctly yeah, all right, very cool. So, uh, so Tyler Holtzman uh, from 2056 is going to play. This is going to be an epic battle, by the way, because a lot of times we get uh, maybe people who are uh, a little less uh, seasoned in first uh, to compete in these. So it'll be interesting to see uh, Tyler versus Andy here. Uh, Tyler, you're really playing for all Tylers, I just want to say. So, uh, you know, please <laughs> represent all of us in the right way. Uh, that would be fantastic. Uh, through that as well. So here's how it's going to once again, Tyler, you're going to get five questions. Uh, you do get an opportunity to pass if you like, and we'll come back to that question. Uh, however, if uh, you do pass a second time, that will be it. And I'm going to ask Christine to help me out if you don't mind, if you can put in the answers uh, from our callers in the uh, trivia tab, if you don't mind, Christine. Yeah. All right. Uh, Tyler Holtzman, uh, any, anything to say before uh, Annie takes off his headphones that you want to say to him? Um... Good luck, and, and let's, let's hope, hope we, we don't, don't have too much pre-2003 trivia. Ah, okay. okay. All right, we'll see, how, we'll see how it works out. So we're going to ask Andy to either mute himself or take off his headphones, and we'll wave to, you, we'll wave to Andy once he's once we're good for him to come back. Now, how do I know when I come back? We're going to wave to you. Okay, okay, got it. There we go. I'm still plugged in, so I can't hear Diddly. All right. So here we go. Uh, Tyler, your first question begins in three, two, one. Uh, what is the name of the next first Lego League game? I have no, no idea, idea, to be honest. honest. All right. Uh, what two teams have the most championship wins in FRC history? 71 and 254. What is the name of the 2010 FRC game? Breakaway. A breakaway. Uh, name a team that has won two official in season events this past season. 2910. All right, and where will the 2021 championships take place? The Detroit Navy Center. All right, and time. All right, we'll give Andy a big wave so he knows. Hopefully, he'll see. <laughs> Tyler, how did you think you did? Fine, I just don't follow Lego League. All right, well, we'll see. Tyler thinks he did pretty fine, Andy. We'll see uh, see how well you are uh, following along and see if you get these as well. So, Andy, are you ready? Sure, yes. All right, in three, two, one. Uh, what is the name of the next first Lego League game? Shoot. <laughs> um, play, play, uh... Something to do with first play or play up or play together. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. All right. I should know. What two teams have the most championship wins in FRC history? Oh, that's easy. Um, the OG would be 70, 71, Team Hammond, or Beast. They have four. And then uh, recent years, Cheesy Poops also got four. So those two teams have four. What was the name of the 2010 FRC game? Oh, 
it was a soccer game with a curl at the end, and 469 broke the game. It didn't win, <laughs> win, didn't win world championships. But what was it? Was it Diabolical Dynamics? Is, was that what it was? I, uh, shoot, I should know the name of the game. You can pass um, when we come back to it, too. I, I, I'll stick with Diabolical Dynamics. What a, name a team that won two official in-season events this past season in FRC. <laughs> Did Kraken win two two events out west? I don't think so. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know that answer. Where will the 2021 championships take place? That was under the radar when they announced that. I think I think they announced them to be both. I'm not sure about this, but I think they announced it to be at Detroit and Houston again. I think, but that was very under the radar. I heard something about it. They didn't make any fanfare about that. That's for sure. All right, and time. I did not do very well. <laughs> you don't think you did too well, Andy? Tyler, no. Tyler seemed a little bit more confident than you, so we'll uh, we'll bring Tyler back in, and we'll go through these uh, answers one by one uh, to see who's going to win. And once again, a uh, winner will be a thirty dollars gift card. I don't know what that translates to in Canadian dollars if Tyler wins, but we'll figure that out. Uh, so, <laughs> sure. so, all right. So, what is the name of the next FRC Lego League game? Uh, Tyler said, I have no idea to be honest. And Andy said, play uh, something to do with first play or play up or play together. Uh, the correct answer is replay. Replay is in there. Almost, Andy. You're so close, Andy. So zero, zero. You were there. <laughs> zero, zero. Uh, what two teams are the most wins in championship, or most championship wins in FRC history? Uh, Tyler said 71 and 254. Andy oh, said 71 and 254. You're both correct. That is a bell for both of you, one to one. Uh, what is the name of the 2010 FRC game? Tyler said breakaway. Andy said Diabolical Ah. Dynamics. Tyler is correct. Two to one. Yeah. Diabolical Dynamics is like what? 2001, isn't it? Or 2000? Oh, it was 01? No, 2000 was... Co-op Partition first was 2000. Diabolical Dynamics 2001, I think. I knew that. Good (laughs) job, Tyler. 2000 Uh, was awesome. 2001 was not. Anyway. Name a team that has won (laughs) two official in-season events this past season. Uh, Tyler said 29-10. And Andy said, I don't know. 2910 is one of the correct answers. That is Jack in the Bot, as well as Cyber Knights and 2421 RTR Team Robotics. So Tyler, three to one. And where will the 2021 championships take place? You both said Detroit and Houston. Uh, Tyler, you have uh, won the $30 Amazon gift card and defeated Andy Baker. Yeah. Tyler, let's give some enthusiasm from you, Tyler. How are you feeling about that? I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, Cyber Knights won two events. They won him with uh, Jack in the Bot. Oh, it must be a different Cyber Knights. Then. East Coast. Oh, okay, okay. Cyber Knights. Yeah, forty nine eleven Cyber Knights West Coast. Okay. So, uh, Very cool. Tyler, congratulations! You've won. Thank you for playing, uh, and we'll get in touch with you to send that over uh, to you. That's going to reset our uh, pool back down to twenty dollars. Uh, and people were asking if we were going to play tomorrow on FTC Live. I think we are. Um, I'll follow up with you on that as well. Thanks a lot, Tyler, for playing. Thank you. Just. Just like going to IRI, Tyler wins. Yeah, exactly. I was going to so. say, All 156 right. got their one. There it is. Yep. That is going to wrap it up for us this evening on FRC Recap. Andy Baker, thank you so much for coming out once again uh, to, to share not only your experiences, but also your expertise in all that is FRC, except for the trivia part. But past that, uh, we appreciate you coming <laughs> on. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thank you. It's great to be here. So with that said, everybody, we'll talk to you next time on FRC Recap next Tuesday. Talk to you then. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with PTC. Don't forget that you can register for Onshape for free and start designing right in your browser at onshape.com forward slash education dash plan. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live and independent.